very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show that puts obscure knowledge to the test. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> now, welcome Dan and Kieran. You're our first pair on the show today. Now, how do you two know each other? Well, um, Dan's, Dan's my, my boss. We both work together in uh, for an insurance company in, in London, and I've worked for him for about, about five years, That's I suppose. Five years, yeah. is, is he a good boss, Kieran? Do you know, he, he normally is, yeah. He takes me out for drinks every now and again, buys me breakfast. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's really actually excellent, yeah. Um, and what, what department of insurance are you in? Uh, we do catastrophe modelling, actually. <laughs> catastrophe wow. modelling, I've done a bit of that in my time. <laughs> yeah. You're catastrophe modellers? Yeah. yeah. So, That's wow. the best job anyone has ever had. Ever. <laughs> Very good. So, you, basically, you, you live in a world of worst-case scenarios. Or well, maths, so, really. Yeah. It's just maths. So when people, when on the news, they always say any catastrophe, this is likely to have cost in the region of so-and-so. You're the people who come up with that figure. Uh, well, along with a lot of other people. But. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, they take all the figures, add them up, and divide them <laughs> by as many of you as there were. Exactly, uh, yeah, yeah. Splendid. What, what yeah. would be the catastrophe model for this afternoon? What would be the, what's the worst-case scenario? <laughs> I guess the best scenario is we walk away with some money. Worst case is I walk away holding a P45, I guess. <laughs> there you go. That's probably what I'd say. Yes, yeah. Dan, what would you like to see come up this afternoon? What would be a great category for you? Uh, well, considering what we do, a bit of geography is always going to be nice. Um, although, Kieran's a film buff. I fancy my chances on a bit of film, but I'd say that's probably a strong category for us as well. Film. Well, what kind of films do you like? Predator. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, OK, anything in the, in the Predator can. <laughs> very good. OK, well, maybe that'll come up. You never know. Uh, well, it's great so. to have you on the show, Dan and Kieran. Very, yeah, very best of luck to the pair of you. Next, we welcome Rob and Katie. Now, how do you two know each other? We've got a shared interest in horror acting, and we work at various horror attractions around the country, dressing up as disgusting creatures. <laughs> that is and, just um, brilliant. <laughs> You're horror actors. We are horror yeah. actors. I've done a fair bit of that in my time as well, actually, as it turns out. <laughs> I'll but, tell you what. Catastrophe modelling seems a little bit boring, now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you specialise in, Rob? Me, I specialise in big, gruff Victorian men with cut faces. And, um, or just a bit of zombieing. That's a nice... Do, 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 go on, do some zombieing. Do some zombieing. Do zombie yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right, I'll do that. <laughs> Something like that, you know. To... <laughs> Something... like looking in the mirror. That's a... That would really, really scare... Well, it did scare me, actually. Even... <laughs> Katie, what do you specialise in? My favourite ever was when I was a zombie <sighs> um, in a cornfield once. It wasn't a job. It Put your hair forwards in. No, it wasn't a job. I just yeah. fancied it. Oh, fantastic. You, <laughs> do, uh, do you want to demonstrate for us now? I... Go on, go on. OK, I could It's going to be scary. Be a <laughs> 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 That's just brilliant. It's just brilliant. Do you know what, though? Generally, statistically, people turn on TV shows all the time. <laughs> and there will be a number of people who turned on between you asking her to act like a zombie and that happening. <laughs> Someone would just think, what the... Uh, it's pointless. Those crazy guys are pointless. Oh, uh, dear. That's absolutely fantastic. Well, very best of luck to the pair of you. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. And next, we welcome back Roland and Janice. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two chances to reach the pointless final. This is your second chance. Remind us what happened, Roland. Well, Janice had got a very good answer, which was, I think, scored three points. So I decided that I wouldn't play safe and I'll gamble. The question was uh, landlocked islands and uh, landlocked, landlocked, countries. Countries. landlocked countries. And I went for Tibet. Tibet, not a, not a member of the UN. Of that's course. right, uh, yes. that's right. But well, that's Which the gamble is, uh, I took. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Now, this afternoon, Janice, what would you like to see come up? Oh, history, I quite like history and maybe books, How literature. about gruesome history? Any gruesome history oh, of Derbyshire? I don't know which, I'll leave that to the experts. OK, OK. <laughs> okay. Yeah. History, Roland, what, what about you? Probably geography. Geography. Well, very, very best of luck to the pair of you. And next, we welcome back Miriam and sally Ann. You were on the show last time. We were. Remind us what happened. Well, Mary Magdalene and the Vatican City did us in. I tell you, oh, didn't they? They <laughs> Dan conspired. Dan Brown's got a lot to answer for. Yes, he well, has. You, he were, has. you were rewriting theology there. Uh, yes. You, we suddenly had Mary Magdalene at the Last Supper. Yes. Well, she was there, but she wasn't in, in, yes. uh, in the Da Vinci uh, photograph. Yes. Photograph? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes, you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> yes. What's going to see you get through to the head-to-head -head and beyond, sally Ann, this afternoon? Well, I'd, I'd really like the subject to come out on by tweets by Richard Osman. 
I follow him on Twitter, you see, and <laughs> I, I know those ones. <laughs> they're good. They're always... They're worth waiting for, aren't they? Oh, so, oh Os with Osmond bated tweets. breath. Yes. Uh, very best of luck. Lovely to have you back. We'll find out more about all of you throughout the show as it goes along. There's only one person left for me to introduce. At his local village fate, he takes charge of the Guess the Weight of the Helium Atom competition. He is my pointless friend. He's Richard. Hiya. Hiya. Ah, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Richard. What a show we're going to have. We've got two returning pairs. Roland and Janice, very unlucky last time, I think. They were very good, but we only saw them for the first round. Miriam and Sally Ann, we saw an awful lot of, and they uh, lasted all the way through to the the head-to-head. The -head. They made their presence felt. But uh, now we've got the horror actors versus the catastrophe modellers. <laughs> that's awesome, isn't it? Isn't it? That's, like a, that's a Predator movie for you. <laughs> it should be a, a very good show, I think. We think we've got four very good pairs here today. Splendid. Well, thank you very much, Richard. Now, we've put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers they didn't get. To stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they possibly can. Now, what everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Nobody won the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £7,500. <laughs> Right, let's play Pointless. In the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. OK, our category for the first round is... Music. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many percussion instruments as they could. Yeah, all the correct answers in this round will be percussion instruments. That's any instrument that can be played by striking with a hand, a stick or a beater, or by shaking. The incorrect answers in this round won't be musical instruments at all. OK, now then, Dan and Kieran, you all drew lots before the show, and this afternoon you get to go first. You're going to be delighted to hear, though, in this round we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers on the board for each pass. The size from everyone there is almost enough to blow me over. OK, your first set of seven answers reads like this. Claves, castanets, mazzaraf, tambourine, marimba, drum, vibraphone. I'll read those one more time. Claves, castanets, mazzaraf, tambourine, marimba, drum, vibraphone. There we are. Now, I can tell you at least one of those answers is pointless, but be very careful because at least one of those answers is incorrect. Pick an incorrect one and you will score the maximum of 100 points. So then, Kieran. Yes. Percussion instruments. Yeah. I'm not a terribly musical individual. I haven't got an awful lot of rhythm, and I'm not terribly good at playing any instruments. Who could ask for anything more? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I'm terrified of getting off to a, to a bad start, so I think I've got something solid. OK, very good. Well, use that, Kieran. <laughs> castanets, please. You're going to go for castanets? Yes, well, please. as always, you're trying to pick the most obscure answers. You're saying castanets. You're hoping that's the one that the fewest of our 100 people said. Let's see if it is. Is it right? How many people said castanets? It's right. Very well done. Eleven. Eleven for castanets. Richard. Yeah, well played, Kieran. Obviously, most famously used uh, by the Spanish and flamenco music and what have you. Thank you very much. Now then, Katie. Yes. Katie, is this a good subject for you? <laughs> this isn't my subject of choice. <laughs> um, OK. And Kieran stole my castanets, so <laughs> I'm quite upset right now. Um, there's a couple on there that I think are percussion instruments, and there's a couple of obscure ones, and I'm going to go for an obscure one, I think. I might say claves. 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 At the top there. Claves. Let's see if it's a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said claves. Good luck. It's right. Oh. Very well done indeed, Katie. Down it goes, still going down. Yes! Very well done. That's a pointless answer. It adds £250 to today's jackpot. Takes the total up to £7,750. And best of all, it scores you nothing, Katie. Very well done. Richard. Yeah, well played, Katie. Great start to the game. Claves, uh, they're two cylindrical uh, sticks. They come from Cuba. Cuban in origin. Playing them with a, a cupped hand to, to make the noise. Roland, we come to you. Roland. 
percussion well, instruments? Well, I know some of them, but I'm also torn whether to gamble or not, because I know one of the words is in a song called Sway, and it's in, um, but I don't know whether it's a percussion instrument. So I'm going to play safe, and I'm going to go with tambourine. There we are. You're going with tambourine. Very well done, Roland. That sounds like a cracking answer to me. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said tambourine. It is right. 43. It's not a bad answer, but it's quite a high score, Richard. Yeah, pretty high score. Uh, it's Middle Eastern origin. Now then, Miriam, um, you're the last person to have this board, Miriam, so right. take us through everything on it and fill in the missing bits. Well, I know the Mariba, Mar that, that one, it, I know it's in that song, but I don't know whether it's the rhythm or an instrument. And I have a funny feeling the vibraphone is what we used to have, the toilet paper and the comb and go zzzz. Vibraphone. Vibraphone. OK, vibraphone, says Miriam. You've just changed your mind about what it was. <laughs> you thought it was the comb. Now you think it's percussion. OK, let's see. Um, you're saying vibraphone. Is it right? How many people said it? It's going to go red. <laughs> yes, it's right. You're joking. That scores Miriam only one point. Richard. Yeah, the vibraphone, also known as the vibes, first started as a, as a jazz instrument. It's metal tubes you hit with a padded hammer. <laughs> it's actually very similar, funnily enough, to the marimba, the marimba ribbons, which is in the, in the song Sway, but is also an instrument. And uh, if you'd said that, Roland, you would have scored two points. It would have been a very good answer. Let's go through the rest of the board. Drum, obviously, is a uh, correct answer. But would have scored you a very hefty 74, so well avoided. And Matsarath, by process of elimination, that's the incorrect answer up there. That's the name of the family in the tin drum. Matsarath. Very good. Well, thanks so much, Richard. We're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. Katie and Rob looking absolutely fantastic. Their lovely score of nothing. Brilliant answer. The Claves there. Then we go up to one where Miriam and Sally Ann are. Looking very strong indeed. Up to 11 where Kieran and Dan are currently reside and then we go up quite a long way to 43 where we find Roland and Janice so Janice you have a mountain to climb on the next pass okay we're gonna come back down the line can the second players please take their places at the podium okay we're gonna put seven more names on the board and here they are timpani cymbals tabor triangle gerber tabla and dermatome I'll read those all one more time Timpani, cymbals, tabor, triangle, gerber, tabla, and dermatome. Now, again, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless and at least one of those answers is incorrect, so try and avoid those incorrect answers if you possibly can. Now, remember, we are looking for percussion instruments. sally -Ann. I'm going to play it relatively safe, and I'm going to say timpani because there are, I think, if they're right, I think... They're a type of drum. OK, you're going to say timpani. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Here's your red line. Below that red line, you are definitely through to the next round. Let's see if timpani's right and how many people said it. It's right. Well done, you've done it. You're through. Wow, <laughs> seven. That scores you seven, takes your total up to eight. Very well done, sally -Ann. Richard. Yeah, well played, Sally Ann. Uh, they're European kettle drums, very useful in an orchestra because they're all individually set to a different pitch. Now then, Janice, you're on 43. You are the high scorers. Yeah. Um, I only know three for certain. Yeah. But I'm going to have to gamble. I'm going to go for Tabor. Tabor. I think it's a kind of drum. What do you think, Roland? Uh, I'll uh, agree with Janice. <laughs> Very politic. OK, you're going to say table. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said table. Good luck, Janice. There's no red line for you because you're the high scorers. It's correct. Down it comes. Table. 
That's a pointless answer. It adds another £250 to today's jackpot. Takes the total up to £8,000. It scores you nothing. It leaves your total at 43. Is that going to be enough to save your bacon? I wonder. Let's find out. Richard. Yeah, very, very well played, Janice. A table. It's a small drum usually played with a pipe in folk music. It's still it's from medieval times, but they still use it today in uh, folk bands, what have you. Now, remember, we are looking for percussion instruments. Now then, Rob, you are yes. currently on nothing. Janice yeah. and Roland are still the high scorers on 43. If you can score 42 or less, you're through to the next round. What do you think about this? There's board? two fairly obvious ones up there. Yeah. I'm torn between going for one of them, but they might be worth more than what we need. And I might take a risk with dermatome. Dermatome. Because it sounds quite rhythmical. It sounds good, or it's something you have to apply morning and night. <laughs> yeah. I, I said to the face, it might go anywhere. Who knows? Um, <laughs> there's your red line. If you get below that red line, Rob, you are through to the next round. Dermatome. Well, let's mm. see. Is it right? And if it is, how many people said dermatome? Very best of luck. Oh, no! Oh, oh bad luck, Rob. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Oh, I had such a good feeling about dermatome. That takes your total up to 100. Richard. Yeah, sorry, Rob. It is an instrument, but it's a medical instrument. It's a, it's a cutting tool for cutting skin. <sighs> Dan. Hello. The high scorers are Rob and Katie on 100. You are on 11. If you can score 88 or less, you are through to the next round. As we might say, <laughs> what's the worst that could happen, Dan? <laughs> Depends on triangle going to be too high. I think we're probably going to... Two of them on there, I don't know. Uh, but tabla, I think I'm going to have to try and play symbols and hope it's less than the magic number. So OK, symbols. you're going to go for symbols. Symbols, there they are. Let's see if that's right. If it is, let's see how many people said it. There's your red line, nice and high. Symbols. Is it right? How many people said it? It's right. Yep, you've done it. 54. Very well done. 54 for symbol takes a total up to 65. Richard. Yeah, you see, that is using all the skills of a catastrophe modeler, isn't it? So he worked out the worst case scenario, worked out that was still OK and went for it. Very well played. Let's take a look at the rest of the board. Triangle, obviously, is a percussion instrument. Would have scored you 37 points. Of those other two, Alexander, what do you think? One of those is incorrect. What do you think? Um, a tabla is definitely an instrument. Yeah, it's an Indian, small Indian hand drum, the tabla. A gerba, do you think that's pointless or do you think it's incorrect? I think it's incorrect. It is, yeah. Gerba is the company that makes Mbongo. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. So, Richard, at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score is Rob and Katie. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I tell you what, though, that... That is the spirit of Pointless, right there. You scored a Pointless answer in the first pass, and Rob, you were trying very hard, and I have to say, Dermatome, for my money, was a shoe-in <laughs> as a Pointless uh, rhythm instrument. But anyway, we have to say goodbye to you now, which is an enormous shame, but the good news is we will see you again next time. We'll look forward to that very, very much indeed. Rob and Katie, excellent contestants, thanks very much. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, obviously, there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one team is going to be leaving us at the end of this round. OK, our round two category this afternoon is... Cinema. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? Do you want to go first? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, our question concerns... Film duos and their films. Yeah, we're going to show you six pairs of actors in each pass. We asked 100 people to tell us the name of the film in which that pair played the title characters. So, for example, if it said Harry Enfield and Kathy Burke, that would be Kevin and Perry go large. If you give us a nice obscure answer, you'll score fewer points. But give us an incorrect answer, you're going to score 100 points. It's going to be 12 pairs of actors, 12 films to get. Very best of luck at home. OK, thank you very much. So we are looking for the names of the films in which these actors play the title roles. And we have got Warren Beatty, Faye Dunaway, Amy Adams and Meryl Streep, Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes, Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson, Gary Oldman and Chloe Webb, and Paul Newman and Robert Redford. 
There we are. I'll read them one more time. Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway, Amy Adams and Meryl Streep, Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes, Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson, Gary Oldman and Chloe Webb, Paul Newman and Robert Redford. There we have them. Now, Dan, how does that board look to you? Not the best. <laughs> OK. Um... Well, remember, we are looking for the films in which these pairs of actors played the lead characters, the title characters of the film. Uh, then I am, think I've only really got one Newman and Redford in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. OK, that's what you're saying. You're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's right. Wow, 20. Take that. <laughs> yeah, I'd take that. <laughs> Not bad at all. 20 for, for Butch Cassidy. Uh, yeah, good answer, Dan. It's a tough board, isn't it? Uh, mm. From 1969, won four Oscars. And, Paul, you know, there's lots of bicycle stunts in the film. There's lots of stunts, full stop, but Paul Newman had to do the bicycle stunts because his stuntman couldn't ride a bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good at jumping off cliffs and so on, but... Uh, couldn't ride so a bike. ...on the old bike. Wow. Now then, Roland. I fancy you might be quite good at this. Uh, it's not my subject, really. Really? <laughs> um, but I'm going to play safe, and I hope that uh, it's the right answer, and I'm going to go for... Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway in Bonnie and Clyde. Warren Beatty, Faye Dunaway, Bonnie and Clyde, says Roland. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Bonnie and Clyde. Yes, it's right. That was 20 for Butch Cassidy. 19 for Bonnie and Clyde. Very good. Richard? Yeah, well done, Roland. They played Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow, of course, from 1967. Good answer. Thanks very much. Remember, we're looking for the films in which these pairs of actors play the title characters. Now then, Miriam, is this... I think this would be very good for you. You must be very good at this. Really? I, I know the names, but I can't put the films to them. The only one I've got a, an idea... Probably wrong, but I've got an idea. I think Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes... I think they did The Beach. The Beach, you're saying? Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. No, I didn't think it was. Bad luck. <laughs> I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, which means you scored the maximum of 100 points. Sorry. Richard? Yeah, sorry, Miriam. And we're looking for films, of course, in which they played the title characters oh, as well. What I know the answer. You can look at all of them. It's a really tough board, I think. Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes is the biggest scorer on there, actually. It's Romeo and Juliet, Baz Luhrmann's uh, 1996 version. Would have scored you 45. Amy Adams and Meryl Streep, do you know that one? It's a recent film. Julie and Julia. Would have scored you 10 points. Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson, they've been in lots of films together, but one where they Dukes play title Hazard? characters. Stasky and Hutch. Stasky and Hutch, Hutch. 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 absolutely yeah. right. Would have scored you 13. And Gary Oldman and Chloe Webb, very early Gary Oldman film. Uh, Sid and Nancy. Sid the, uh... and Nancy, exactly. Uh, would have scored three points. Very well done if you said that's the best answer on the board. OK, thank you very much, Richard. Well, let's take a look at the scores. We're halfway through the round. 19, Roland and Janice, the best score of the pass. Then we go up to 20, where we find Dan and Kieran. And then we go way up to 100, where I'm afraid Miriam and Sally Ann are sitting. Sally Ann, you're <laughs> going to have to find a really good, obscure answer on the next pass and hope that that's enough to see you through to the head-to-head. -head. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more answers on the board, and here we go. We have got Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis, George Clooney, Chris O'Donnell, Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell, Dustin Hoffman and Meryl Streep, Michelle Pfeiffer and Al Pacino, and Mira Sorvino and Lisa Kudrow. I'll read those all one more time. Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis, George Clooney and Chris O'Donnell, Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell, Dustin Hoffman and Meryl Streep, Michelle Pfeiffer and Al Pacino, Mira Sorvino and Lisa Kudrow. Now, remember, we are looking for the films in which these pairs of actors play the title characters. And obviously, you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Now, Sally Ann, you're the high scorers on 100 by quite yes. a margin. Yes. So I'm hoping that somewhere on that board, you have found a really obscure pairing and you know the title characters well, they play. I've got two options. I either go for try and get a really, really low score, yeah. or I play safe and hope someone else goes wrong. Oh, yes. Oh, now, what were they called? Uh, yes. Michelle Pfeiffer and Al Pacino, Frankie and Johnny. 
Frankie and Johnny, Michelle Pfeiffer and Al Pacino. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. You're the high scorer, so there's no red line for you, yeah. Sally Ann. You just have to hope it's right, and it's a low, low score. Frankie and Johnny, says Sally Ann. It's right. It's right. Down it goes. It's a great answer. Look at that. <laughs> That scores you one, and it takes your total up to 101. <laughs> Is it enough to keep you in the game, I wonder? We'll yeah, see. Yeah, very well played, Sally. And from 1991, there's a scene in that film where Al Pacino has to act surprised. He opens a door and has to act surprised. And they were filming one of the Star Trek movies nearby, so the director arranged so that when he opened the door, Kirk and Spock were standing there. <laughs> it's quite good, isn't it? That's, That's the story. brilliant. Yeah, it's a good idea, isn't it? Very good. Now then, Janice. You are on 19. The high scorers are Sally Ann and Miriam on 101, which means if you can score 81 or less, you're through to the next round. Well, I knew three on the first board, and I only know one on this one. So I'm going to go to go with Dustin Hoffman and Meryl Streep, Kramer versus Kramer. Dustin Hoffman, Meryl Streep, Kramer versus Kramer, you're saying. There's your red line. If you can get below that red line, you are in the head-to-head. -head. Let's see if Kramer versus Kramer is right for Dustin Hoffman and Meryl Streep. It is right. And you are through to the next round. Very well done. 14. That's a great answer and a great score. Takes your total up to 33. Richard. Yeah, well played, Janice. Another very good answer. They both won Oscars for that film. It was from 1979 that film came out. Very good. Now then, Kieran, we come to you. Yes. You're the last person to have this board, so you can mop up here. Now, the high scorers are Sally Ann and Miriam on 101. You're on 20. If you can score 80 or less, you are in the head to head. Mm hmm. OK. Um, you said film was a good category for you. It as well. is. It is. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that board, but I suppose it just comes down to whether or not it's going to be less than, than what I need. I think they're all, they're all quite popular, the ones I've got left. So I'm going to go for Sly and Kurt Russell. Tango and Cash. Tango and Cash. Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell. There's your red line. Get below that with Tango and Cash. You're through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's see. Is it right? And if it is, how many people said Tango and Cash? Yes, it's right. And you are through to the next round. Very well done. Oh, it's a brilliant answer. Seven points. <laughs> Takes your total up to 27. Richard. Yeah, really well played, Kieran. Your job is safe for another round. Uh, <laughs> yeah, from, from 1989, that film. You'd have, you'd have gone it some If that had scored you 82 points, you'd have been gutted, wouldn't you? <laughs> Let's take a look at the rest of the answers. Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis. Alexander Thelma and Louise. Thelma and Louise, absolutely right. Would have scored 34. George Clooney and Chris O'Donnell. Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin, absolutely. Would have scored 20. And Mira Sorvino and Lisa Kudrow. Do you know that? Slightly trickier. I don't know that That's one. That's Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. So well done if you said that. Ten points. So best answer on the board, actually, is, uh, is Frankie and Johnny. Thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, Miriam and Sally Ann. And that when you got the best answer on the board there, Sally Ann. Oh, and that came at the last moment, didn't it? Well, you did exactly the right thing. You went through to the head-to-head -head last time. We did. Very narrowly beaten, actually. I, I mean, you could easily have been through to the final. This time, I'm afraid we have to say goodbye to you at the end of the second round. <laughs> A great shame and our loss. It's been lovely having you on the show. Sally Ann and Miriam, brilliant contestants. Thanks, Thanks so, so much for playing. Thank you. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. Very well done, Roland and Janice, Dan and Kieran. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £8,000. <laughs> now, for each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, but you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair and you will win that question. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. OK, here is your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Olympic host cities beginning with L as they could. Olympic host cities beginning with L. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any city which has hosted a summer or a winter Olympics right from the first Olympics of 1896 up to and including 2010, please. 
OK, thank you very much. Now, Roland and Janice, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. Do you agree? Yeah. Uh, Lilyhammer. Lilyhammer. OK, very good. Roland and Janice, say Lilyhammer. Dan and Kieran, if you need to confer any more, you can do it out loud. Uh, yeah, no, I think... Yeah, yeah no, we, we were thinking about Lilyhammer. Obviously, there's a few others. Los Angeles, London. But we're going to go for Lisbon. Lisbon. So we have Lillehammer and we have Lisbon. Roland and Janice said Lillehammer. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Lillehammer. Very well done. It's right. Oh, it's a brilliant answer. Very well said, Roland. <laughs> Lillehammer scores you just eight. And Dan and Kieran, you're going for Lisbon. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Lisbon. Bad luck. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. Which means, after one question, Roland and Janice are ahead. 1-0. Richard? Yeah, very well played, Roland and Janice. 1994 Winter Olympics in Lillehammer. There was one answer that would have beaten it. It's another Winter Olympic venue. Lake Placid would have scored you seven points. Hosted two Winter Olympics there. Lillehammer, there you go, with eight. Los Angeles, 36. And London, 72. Thank you very much, Richard. OK, here is your second question. Dan and Kieran, you have to win this question to stay in the game. OK, here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many fire and water signs of the zodiac as they could. Fire and water signs of the zodiac, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any star sign of the western zodiac that is characterised as a fire sign or a water sign, please. There are six possible answers. OK, thanks very much. Now, Dan and Kieran, you go first this time. Yes. Uh, yeah, we're not not really zodiac people, really. But um, I don't know, Sagittarius. Oh, but you are. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, are um, we though? I think I'm going to say Sagittarius as a fire one. Sagittarius. Yeah. Okay, Sagittarius. You're saying Roland and Janice. Should we do? Go for that. Okay, mm. have a go then. Pisces. You're going to say Pisces. So we have Sagittarius and we have Pisces. Dan and Kieran, you have to hope that that wins because if it doesn't, we say goodbye to you. Sagittarius, say Dan and Kieran. Is it right? How many people said it? Come on. It's right. Down it goes. 19. Very well done. 19 for Sagittarius. Roland and Janice, you have gone for Pisces. If you win this question, you are straight through to the final. Let's see. Pisces, is it right? How many people said it? Well done, it's right. Oh, 61. Very high. Well done, Dan and Kieran. That's kept you in the game. After two questions, it's one all. Richard. Yeah, well played, guys. Uh, Sagittarius, a fire sign. Pisces, a water sign. Sagittarius, best answer, actually. Couldn't have beaten it. Let's take a look. Uh, Sagittarius, 19, a fire sign. Scorpio, that's a water sign, 24. Aries, fire, 27. Leo, fire, 34. And the top two are both water signs. Cancer, 35. Pisces, right at the top on 61. Very good head-to-head. Very good. Very close indeed. Here is your third and final question. Whoever wins this question goes through to the final and plays for that massive jackpot. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many US states on the historic Route 66 as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any of the eight US states through which you travel if you drove the historic Route 66. OK, now then, Roland and Janice, you go first this time. OK. Arizona. Arizona, say Roland and Janice. Dan and Kieran, if you need to chat anymore, you can do it out loud. Um, no, I think we're all right. I think we know where it starts. Um, I'm pretty sure it starts in Illinois, so I'm, I'm going to go for that, I think. Illinois. OK, yeah. we have Arizona and we have Illinois. Whoever wins this goes through to the final. Roland and Janice said Arizona. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Arizona. Good luck. Right. That's right, down it goes. 21. 21 for Arizona. Very, very exciting. Is that going to be enough, I wonder? Illinois, Dan and Kieran. Illinois, you think this is right? I, I don't, I'm pretty sure. I was until that happened. <laughs> I was, I was sure. Until, yeah. yeah. So if it is right, it could be good enough to beat the 21. I think so. <laughs> if it's right. Very, very, very best of luck. <laughs> Illinois, is it right? And if it is, how many people said it? It is right. 
Will it go lower than 21? Yes, it does. Very well done. Nine. Nine for Illinois, which means after two questions, Dan and Kieran are through to the final 2-1. Richard? Yeah, well played both teams. Terrific head-to-head. -head. Let's take a look at all eight states, see if anyone at home got all of them. Oklahoma was the best answer there. Three points. New Mexico, four. Missouri and Kansas, both seven. There's Illinois, nine. Texas, 18. Arizona, 21. And California, 47. One of our hundred people thought it went through Yorkshire. <laughs> Which, which it doesn't. <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid it's Roland and Janice. Bad luck. That was a very hard-fought head-to-head there. Round one last time. <laughs> this time, storming through to the head-to-head -head and very, very close to it was. Well, a great shame. We have to say goodbye to you now. Thank you very much for playing, Roland and Janice. Great contestants. Thank you. But for Dan and Kieran, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win our jackpot of £8,000. <laughs> well, congratulations, Dan and Kieran. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy, so very, very well done. <laughs> you now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot and at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £8,000. <laughs> now, the rules are very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people could think of. Now, we've had two pointless answers on the show today. You only have to find one more and you will go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category. and You can choose from these three options. They are best-selling authors, US pop stars, famous foodies. <laughs> First impression, not famous foodies. No, famous foodies, I can't do. No. Best selling uh, authors, you're, you're good at all your literature yeah, stuff. Yeah, but you spend your life watching pop videos. I do. But, <laughs> so... but then, you know, oh, I'd back myself on that. Yeah, I, I'd back you on the top one. I think. No, let's go for that. That could be so vast. Do you reckon? Yeah. US pops, there's a lot of people in the US <laughs> listening to a lot of music. No, let's go that. Okay, fine. Go for US pop stars, please. US pop okay, stars. US pop stars it is. Let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Prince top 40 singles as they could. Prince top 40 singles. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any single released by Prince or which has them as a named featured artist which has reached the UK top 40 prior to April 2011, please. Okay. You now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. And all you need to win that £8,000 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. So you got any? I hate him, no. Oh. I haven't got a single one. <laughs> so... Purple. Purple Rain, that's it. Party Light is 1999. <laughs> None of these are going to be pointless. No. We're ever in trouble. I haven't got a single one, mate. Oh. I don't like Prince. <laughs> no one likes Prince. <laughs> Prince likes Prince. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay. I've got nothing. Yeah, that album we gave away, which someone gave me. Didn't he have one quite recently, the whole When Is a Symbol? There must have been something on that. Surely something on that did quite well. Mate, I've, I've got nothing. Oh. I know, sorry, pal. That's all right. <laughs> Damn, got eight Purple pounds. Rain. Yeah, got Purple Rain, which everyone knows. It's not that's all I've got. I don't, I don't even have three. No, that's bad. Damn. Unless it's, I don't know. Is he. Like, duetted on anything? I don't even know that. Yeah, probably. No, we're in trouble. Five seconds remaining. Sorry, I think we're... we're, we're... OK, that is your minute up. There it is. We were looking for Prince UK Top 40 hits. I now need three answers from you. Now, what do you have again? Purple Rain. And Purple Rain. I do like it's 1999. Um, yeah, and other than... I can't even think of anything else he's done. Oh. OK, Purple Rain, 1999 and... Let's have a third answer. Get in my car. <laughs> Get in my car. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. It's good, it's catchy. Yeah. Get in my car. <laughs> OK, here we go. What of those three, which one is your best shot at a point? <laughs> Get in my car. Get in my car. <laughs> OK, we'll put, that, we'll put that last. Which is your least likely? Uh, let's Purple, Purple Rain. Purple Rain. OK, let's put them up on the board in that order. And here they are. Purple Rain. 1999 and get in my car. 
OK, we we're looking for, for Prince UK Top 40 singles. You said this was your least confident answer. Let's see how many people said Purple Rain. This is your first shot at the jackpot. Well, it's right. So you never know. Our 100 people may not know anything about Prince. Oh! 60. 61. All right, they know, they know something about Prince. Unfortunately, that's not a pointless answer. You only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. Let's just say Get In My Car or 1999 were pointless. What would you spend eight grand on? I think I'd probably have to... A Prince album, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be my first purchase. Yes. What a sort of penance, you mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. The whole back catalogue. Whole back catalogue, all of it. OK. <laughs> uh, OK, let's hope nobody said your next answer, which is 1999. Maybe it'll go down to pointless. Let's see. It has to, if you're going to win that jackpot of £8,000. 1999, how many people said it? Is it right? It is right. So let's see if we can break the first hurdle, which is 61. Yes! Down it goes. Into 40s, into 30s, 34. <laughs> Actually, got a lot higher. Well, that's better. That's much better. You only have one more chance to win today's jackpot. Obviously, not a pointless, <laughs> not a pointless answer. Listen, it's it's just the sort of song he might have written. Get in my car. Let's see. Okay, this for the jackpot of eight thousand pounds. Get in my car. Is it right? How many people said it? <laughs> Did you? Well, unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £8,000, which rolls over onto the next show. But you have been brilliant contestants, and you do, of course, get to take home our pointless trophy. So... Thank you. Thank you. Richard. Yeah, unlucky guys. Prince Top 40 singles. Let's take Get In My Car. Unfortunately, it's not by Prince. Of course, it's by David Hasselhoff. And, more importantly, it wasn't called Get In My Car, either. It was called Jump In My Car. Though it was a Top 40 hit, so uh, 183 ain't bad. <laughs> Sandra, you're a big Prince fan. I am, I, the, I am uh, genuinely a Prince really? fan. Really? Yeah. You want to have a little crack at a pointless answer? Yeah, I think so. Diamonds and Pearls, maybe? Um, uh, nope. Get Diamonds off. and Pearls would have scored you seven. Get Off um, would have scored you four. Um, I could never take the chance. place of your man. From, if you'd said, um, I could never take the place of your man. Yeah. Pointless answer. There you go. Pointless Sign of the answer. times. Very well done. <laughs> Very well done. Let's take a look at a few more of the pointless answers, see if you've got any of these at home. Glam Sound from the Love Sexy album. Another Lover Hole in Your Head, that was a pointless answer. Bat Dance, which was uh, US number one. Bitcher by Golly Wow, which he releases the artist formerly known as Prince, the old stylistic song. Controversy, Dinner with Dolores, those are both pointless. I Hate You, Girls and Boys, and Seven. Seven. All pointless answers. Very well done if you've got any of those at home. Or indeed you've got I Can Never Take the Place of Your Man. Very good answer. Splendid. It was, wasn't it? Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Dan and Kieran. But it's been brilliant having you on the show. Thank you both okay. so much for playing. Great contestant. <laughs> Nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over, which means on the next show we will be playing for £9,000. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.